Now, we're going to take a step back in time, in fact, to a time when South Africa was governed by a white minority government that operated under a system called apartheid. It was racially discriminatory, but it was challenged both within and outside the country. Support for the ANC, which was in the forefront of the struggle against apartheid, was especially strong in Britain. And now a new book called The Politics of Race in Britain and South Africa by the historian and academic Elizabeth Williams explores that British-South African connection. And I'm delighted to say that Elizabeth now joins me in the studio. A very good morning to you. From my generation, we're talking about a connection which probably goes back 30 or so years. But it's much deeper, really, isn't it? It is, uh, Juliet. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, one of the great joys of researching this book was really to start at the end of the 19th century and look at the ways in which black Britons, as well as obviously the broader uh, community, were very concerned about South Africa from the 1900s. Mm. And it's, it's fascinating as well because we remember it as the time when the African National Congress, the current governing party, the ANC, they led that fight. A lot of people over here subscribe to the ANC in small ways or major ways, and yet the ANC was seen as a terrorist organization internationally. That's right. There was quite a disconnect, actually, between how the government of this country saw the ANC and how the people felt on the ground. And I think one of the reasons was, was because at that time there was so much happening in Britain itself that people felt that they could identify, uh, in particular, the BME communities here. This is black and minority ethnic. That's right, who were experiencing quite a lot of racism on the ground. So when they looked at South Africa, they totally and utterly identified and wanted to do something about it and stand in solidarity. And there were South African exiles who were living in London as well. That's right. They came over here around about the end of the uh, 50s, uh, early 1960s. And they're the ones, actually, that were part of the anti-apartheid movement and started and founded the anti-apartheid movement. And it, 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 as I said really at the beginning, for my generation, it, it had a resonance in the 80s and the 90s. That's when people started talking about it. That's when the, the spotlight really shone on South Africa. But prior to that time, was there a sense that wider society, white society in Britain, was actually listening, that it went beyond the liberal talking classes? In a way, yes, because there was a very strong anti-colonial movement here in Britain, which were very concerned about Africa at that time. So there was a very broad group of people who wanted to see a change and actually wanted to see the end of colonialism and imperialism. And the growth of uh, racism in uh, South Africa and apartheid, which was introduced in 1948, caught their attention. So there was definitely an interest from the inception of apartheid. Was there a sense of recipro reciprocation amongst activists in South Africa to, towards Britons who were experiencing, black Britons who were experiencing racism, particularly at the hands of institutions like the police, for example. There were a number of investigations into police conduct, particularly the Metropolitan Police and the number of arrests uh, made by white officers with blacks. But was there a sense of South Africans being aware of this and actually doing whatever they could from their situation to actually support their counterparts here? Yes and no. I think really, if you can remember at that time, black South Africans could not travel. There were definitely avenues uh, of contact between people, a lot of it quite covert. And interestingly enough, when I interviewed people, there were still people who weren't willing to talk about the links at that time. But there was definitely a sense, yes. And in the early part of the 20th century, as a matter of fact, the Pan-Africanist con uh, Congress that started from the 1900s to 1945, there were at that time South Africans who did manage to come and talk about the situation in South Africa as well as identify with what was going on here. So you now have a black-led government in South Africa. From the perspective of those who helped to fight the struggle from over here, South Africans in exile and also the black community, how, are they, how do they view the current xenophobic protests that have taken place? It must be a sense of disappointment. I think there's definitely a sense of sadness, for sure, yeah. Yes. And what, what do they feel? Does it, does it, does it lead them to question the, the actual struggle itself? That if, is this what it's achieved, that you've got black-on-black -black violence? I think that they've divorced the politics from actually the people and the still inequalities that are on the ground. So um, I think, and even in a sense over here as well, you know, right. when there are problems, they are looking at the community and trying to think of other ways okay. to help the community on the ground. Elizabeth, we have to leave it there. Sadly, time Thank goes you so against much. us. But a great book, definitely worth reading. Thank you so much for joining us here. Here on This Day Live.